I really love it here, but people don't seem to like witches in this town. Kiki's delivery service is usually associated with themes of the artist's plight and growing up, but I recently watched it again and I'm seeing it from a whole new perspective. And maybe that's because I'm having a hard time existing in a world where questionable groupthink is praised and those who divert from the collective narrative are ridiculed, silenced, censored, or worse. It got me thinking about how even though Miyazaki wasn't specifically talking about this when he made the film, it still has some valuable insights about the dangers of societal conformity. I think something's wrong with me. For example, Kiki has to navigate her new town, which is full of teenagers in colorful outfits, while she sticks out in her witchy black dress and is ridiculed for it. We can take a step back from Kiki's experience and view this through a broader lens of societal expectations and norms. Societal expectations can be defined as a guide on how individuals are expected to act, interact and conform to the prevailing norms of their community. And sometimes this can be a good thing. We wouldn't want to see people going around spitting on others or throwing babies. It's hilarious. But do we need societal norms and conformity to tell us not to do that? Well, we can look to Ralph Emerson for some more evolved thoughts on this. He was an American essayist, lecturer, philosopher, and poet who led the transcendentalist movement of the mid-19th century. In his essay, Self-Reliance, Emerson presents a compelling argument against societal conformity. He talks about the idea that true value lies in individualism, and he encouraged people to trust their own intuition and judgment rather than blindly following societal norms. He argues that this internal guidance is more crucial and true than the chorus of external influences, including popular opinion, tradition, or established societal norms. This whole marriage is what you want. Do you ever bother to ask what I want? Emerson thought that blindly following these without first establishing your true self led to a loss of advancements, both personally and in society as well. And we've seen this play out historically, with one of the most extreme and horrific examples of blindly following societal expectations being the Holocaust, the Rwandan genocide, and the Salem witch trials. But the choice to conform or remain authentic to your own values and belief system doesn't only occur in dire situations. We're faced with this choice in everyday scenarios like choosing to get a degree, wearing a certain style, supporting a certain cause, or staying in a religion you grew up in. In those situations, does our behavior or choice always match up with our true authenticity? When you're, when you're different, sometimes you feel like a mistake. Emerson thought that this was the most important part of realizing your best and most whole self. In other words, actions speak louder than words when it comes to the core of who you really are. And the moral worth of a person cannot be judged on how well they follow rules, but on their commitment to their own principles and beliefs. Emerson also says that each person has an innate sense of right and wrong, and this inner sense, when genuinely followed, leads to actions that are inherently moral and authentic. While societal conventions often cloud this inner moral sense, this inner wisdom is a source of truth that transcends the wisdom found in books or from teachers. Societal norms and expectations drown out this inner voice and can lead to a life that is unfulfilling and inauthentic, negating the necessary ingredients for us to innovate, create, and contribute meaningfully to society. And Emerson isn't the first to think this way. This describes a concept known as genius. When we think of geniuses, we most often think of the kid who went off to college at seven or the Einsteins of the world. But what if I told you that everyone has genius? Okay, 
the NPC at the corner store doesn't seem like a genius, but let me explain. Our inner genius is a unique set of gifts and talents hidden inside us, waiting to awaken so we can live the lives our souls yearn to live. And when a genius inside someone opens, it's not just for themselves, it's for the community as a whole. We all have different gifts that are meant to contribute to the world, but those gifts stay hidden if we're all expected to conform to one way of being. Now let's jump back to Kiki. Before she can experience an awakening to her true authenticity and inner genius, she must first struggle with committing the most awful societal faux pas. Failure. Kiki learns that her job delivering pastries is not as fulfilling as she thought it would be, and she doesn't know how to move forward. And here's the awful truth. This is actually a necessary part of discovering your inner genius. You have to fail. The talent is the biggest scam in the world. It is, oh, he's talented. Listen, born that's talent. born talent. Nobody's born talented. Nobody's born talented. Even the most f***ing pro today, f***ing youngest kid on the keys, if you go into their mind, you'd be like, oh, they're, oh, they're just seeing things and looking at things in a different way. You hear the term genius get thrown around. It's mm -hmm. like, well, no, he just put the hours in. No. But there's that level of persistence there and mm -hmm. that non-stop kind of like heading towards something and getting better at it and just refining it and refining it and refining it. People are so afraid to fail, man. Failure is like, in a lot of cases, the catalyst for greatness. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Off the back of failure, people do their best things. There's a Native American myth that brings me comfort when I think about my many, many, many failures. So I'll tell it to you now. It begins as myths normally do, deep in a cave. And in this cave, there's an old woman weaving a beautiful garment. She's been weaving this garment since the dawn of time. And it's a painstaking process, but she keeps going until she needs to stir the pot of earth. You see, she has to periodically stir this pot because if she doesn't, then the contents within it, like the plants, seeds, and grains of earth, will burn and leave the land barren. So she gets up to stir the pot, and when she leaves the room, her dog goes to the garment and unravels the whole thing. She returns to see the unfinished garment that's taken her a lifetime to weave, lying unraveled on the floor. She takes a deep breath, and then an idea comes to her mind. She thinks up an even better, even more beautiful garment. So she picks up a piece of the unraveled thread and starts to weave an even better vision of the garment. So in this story, the woman who weaves the garment is the woman who weaves the world. And the thing is, is that she can never stop weaving, because if she does, then that's the end. The world doesn't continue on. And so instead a cycle occurs where she weaves, fails, and then through that failure, she can progress and move through it and onto an even better vision, each time making a better version than before. Towards the end of the film, there's a moment where Kiki is forced to discover her true meaning or the inner genius she can bring to the world. The audience can see that in the traditional sense, Kiki has not failed. In fact, she's quite successful in her delivery service, and yet she feels empty. It doesn't bring her the joy that it should have, according to established constructs. And so Kiki has to discover what defines her happiness outside of the confines of traditional success. There's a distinct moment when she's talking to Ursula that she realizes that she must do this by herself. She has to come to terms with her individual soul outside of her external world and outside of the roles that others use to define her. When she steps outside of her community, she learns that her power is derived from within, and she can no longer rely on others to boost her confidence or her own development. Kiki would have never been happy just being a witch or flying for the sake of flying. She needs something else. 
Something as intangible as the inner genius that gives her world purpose and meaning. So Kiki picks up her metaphorical thread of life and begins weaving something new. She discovers that success isn't her purpose and she can derive purpose from her life on her own terms in ways that truly feel fulfilling to her. Okay, so that's it for this video. Sorry if it was all over the place, but this is how my mind thinks. It goes from one idea to the next, so hopefully it wasn't too rambly. And I hope that you were able to follow along. I'd love to hear your thoughts if you were. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Bye!